SEO for engineers, technical SEO um, is what I like to call it. I was going to put technical SEO for the super bean, but <laughs> I thought that might be a little, you know, like brown nose on, so I decided to, you know, uh, put in that transition in. Um, does this sound good? Okay. Salutations, hi. My name's Bart Gibby. Um, I'm married, I've got four kids. I'm an internet marketing consultant, that's my profession. Uh, formerly vice president of SEO at Boostability. You might have seen some of their advertisements around here. Um, got a couple of billboards and sponsors and stuff. Anyway, it was fun. We made like $23 million of the year I left. And we had a good time. And um, they treated me very well. My faction is the Alliance. Um, I'm, my race is known. And I'm a, my class is Warlock. I don't know if you guys are familiar with World of Warcraft, but I really enjoy it. So you can tell me already what my hobbies are. I enjoy video games, and I do a little PHP, okay? So I dabble here and there. Um, so um, I wanted to start with some recent Google algorithm changes, just to kind of get you guys a little familiar with what's going on with SEO. Um, who here feels, do you feel like you know what's going on, AJ? No, I think I'm a little bit out of the loop. Okay. <coughs> So, um, what was your name again? Ethan. Ethan, okay. Anybody else? Uh, mobile, mobile Giddon? Yes, yeah. yes, Mobile Giddon. Yeah, definitely. How about you in the back? No, I don't. Okay. Clueless. Welcome. <laughs> right on. So, each year Google changes its search algorithm around 500 to 600 times, according to Moz.com, which is um, a company uh, who runs, what should I say? Millions and millions of tests on, like, on searches, and they have a whole, they have a whole team of. Well, they have the main one doctor who's a doctor, a statistician. And he runs um, their uh, Mozcast, so like a weather forecasting thing. And we'll, I'll show you that in a bit. Um, for like, what's the temperature uh, on Google today? You know, and is there a lot of rain change going on, or is it pretty pretty calm? Um, that's how they kind of know these things. When I first started, Google came out and said they only did like 265 a year. That was like in 2006. You know, they have, then they've hired thousands of engineers since then. So and they have so many more things now. They've got maps and uh, all these integration, integrated pieces with AdWords and uh, that cool bar thing at the top. What do they call it? All of a sudden, my, name, my mind just went blank. Uh, shoot. Um, anyway, but here's your official post about the mobile uh, mobile mobile get in. Um, but it, was, <coughs> it wasn't really that that just, people kind of freaked out because they like they brought it out first before they actually implemented it. They don't usually do that. Usually, just implement stuff and you just figure out later what's going on. Um, uh, so people kind of freaked out and called it mobile get in, and there wasn't a really big change in the weather according to Moscow. Um, so uh, there are some really awesome recommendations by Google. I don't know, has anybody looked at this document yet? So there are some specific SEO guidelines that they have for mobile. Um, one of the major ones, well, I shouldn't say major ones. We'll just start with one that I found, I found quite amusing. They wanted to make sure that when they said mobile that everybody understood they were only talking about smartphones. and does not include tablets. So they made, made a big deal out of that a little bit. And, um, where did my mouse go? There it is. Okay. So, you guys can't see that, can you? So, um, yeah, okay, here it is. So, basically, they want you to understand the different devices. You know, any good UI guy is going to, you know, take the time to understand their, who's using the website. You know, and so it's, you know, there's things mobile, not tablets. Um, anyway, they go through, there's a lot here. And if you have the time, I highly recommend you go through it. Um, if you're interested in mobile, um, this is the best thing here, though. This, this is a great tool. Anybody have a website you want to try out? Personal website? I've got one. Hamstudy.org. Uh oh. What? Hamstudy.org. Ham? H-A-M-S-T-U-D-Y.org. 
Sorry, is that right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, did, I get, did I get it wrong? Um, red bar uh, there. We'll try HTTPS though. Okay. Maybe it doesn't like redirects. Yeah, why not? Also, this page is mobile friendly. Way to go. And it gives you a little image of what it looks like down here on the left. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah, and you don't, like, the text isn't crumpled up, so that's really good. It's a good sign. Um, sometimes this will come back and say it's mobile friendly, and the text will be like, <laughs> I've got a, a client site that's like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a fun little tool. I like it a lot. Um, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's the end all of like testing mobile devices for friendly, friendly like usability for uh, like the actual user, but for an actual like a, a robot like Googlebot, um, it's pretty good. I mean, Google made it. And I I haven't had any problems with it so far. I don't know if anybody else has any input on that. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, Maybe else would you like, want to try another one? <clears throat> what did you have? Learnallthenodes.com. Right. I'm going to try it here first. So learn all the nodes. Yeah. .com. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are JavaScript nodes then? Yeah. Okay. Is that on a WordPress site? No, I don't think it's good. Okay. That looks pretty good too, at least from their screenshot there. That's awesome. Well, so far so good today. That's good. Anybody else? I'll give it a go. Mine, uh, batteryheads.com. start working on it as an SEO it's like you know you're a week or two into it you've already got like content and stuff and he hasn't got back to you yet you know and, and you know two weeks later it's like right the links for him or whatever you know we got content out there and it's pointing to the wrong site you know <laughs> I, I, it's happened a few times when I was younger thankfully I haven't had to deal with that lately so um, so what is battery? What is what is the battery do? It's a uh, Magento site. It's e-commerce. Oh, right on. I haven't played Magento since like '09. But the guys, the, the, the programmers are running, who are programming, the, the engineers were charging a lot of money for Magento. It was like, wow. Well, this, we run the community edition, but there's an enterprise one that's like 15, 20 grand a year. Wow. Yeah. And just to get one of the things you look at for us, was, he was charging a lot of money. I was like, wow, <coughs> that was pretty good niche for some guys. You know, it was totally worth it. Um, I can have your fare here. Let's see. Looks pretty good. Yeah. I haven't played, I didn't, I haven't played around with that yet. Okay. All right. Well, that's been fun. Um, everything seems to pass. You guys are doing really well. Um, it does mention that there are some resources that were blocked by robots.txt, which is obviously probably intentional. Um, you know, and then it kind of, you know, pitches its other stuff like Webmaster Tools. And I'll go, I have a couple of screenshots for Webmaster Tools we'll go into a little bit. Who here has used Webmaster Tools already? Awesome. That's really good. Okay. Um, so uh, there's another unnamed update. These are very typical. Um, and I'll show you Moscast real quick. <clears throat> well, if you want to see the actual uh, Google, um, sorry about that. 
the actual Google uh, post for the mobile kids and why I read that, in addition to that other page, it's here too. This is the actual blog post. When this was post, posted, I get emails of these. When this was posted, I was like, oh no, not another mobile thing. But then I started reading, I was like, oh, <laughs> this is actually going to be an algorithm change rather than just you know trying to push everybody, you know, make your websites mobile friendly. So that was exciting. So I have any idea how much how much weight they're not putting on mobile? I mean, if you don't have a mobile friendly site, how bad the how bad you know, um, according to Moscast, because it wasn't a very tumultuous scenario, so the weather was fairly fair for that for that time frame. Um, I'm assuming it was it wasn't a major change um, as far as weight goes. However, I think for some sites. It's kind of like a chicken and egg thing. You can go to your analytics and you can say, I don't have any mobile traffic, therefore, I don't need to optimize for mobile users. Well, how are you going to get mobile users if you don't, why do they ever come to your site if it's not mobile friendly? Right, especially since now Google search results say if it's mobile. Right, right. So, um, I, like by, okay, so by 20, 2018, mobile users are going to be what well, overcome desktop users as far as you know uh, how many users are actually on the internet at any one time. So it's a huge push by Google, and it's a it's, it's a huge push by me and and other and other companies. Um, I, I wrote a, a an article in Forbes about it um, last year actually. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited about it. I hope that answers your question. I'm excited for competitors that don't do a mobile site to get right. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it definitely won't get so. Way Google does it now is, is you can call it a penalty if you want. It's more like an optimization, right? Where who's optimizing the experience for the user? Where you have a smartphone, you're going to be given smartphone results that your phone can actually handle. Because Google's not going to send somebody to a website that isn't optimized for that user. Because that's a bad experience for that user. And Google's going to try and frame you from doing that at all costs. So the, the optimization only good. takes place when doing a search on mobile? <coughs> or does it rank it higher even on desktop? <coughs> you know, that's a great question. Uh, in the past, before this, I would definitely say yes, absolutely. And then this, with this new update, since it's still a little new, I'm unsure on that. How long ago did this update happen? It's about a month, I think, or three weeks. Interesting. Let's see. April 21st. Yes. This is when the actual it when it actually came out. It was um, uh, <coughs> the goal was on the 26th of February. Um, <coughs> Checkpoint you know, Google Analytics and see if there's any bump. At that point, yeah, because yeah, mine that. is pretty much the only ham radio study website that I'm aware of that's responsive. And then Pigeon is just local, so if you guys do any local kind of stuff, uh, Pigeon isn't really like engineering kind of based at all. Um, mainly your markers, and SEO guys probably handling things to do with Pigeon. Um, uh, then there's some Penguin. Penguin is a <clears throat> Uh, it's about links and quality of links. Uh, has anybody ever noticed lately that they like Google more or less in the last two years, result-wise? <laughs> yeah, see, well, I feel the same way. Whereas I haven't really, I haven't really run across a result that I haven't gotten my answer lately. So I've just been satisfied. It met my expectations, and they've been keen to continue to do that. So I have never switched to Bing. I've tried Bing for an experiment for like a month. Like I, you know, I defaulted my browser to it. <clears throat> but re what really got me was the the mobile integration that Google has for me. So I kept going back to Google for like Maps and and other other things. And so um, I have yet to switch. And I I still enjoy Google. And I think it's because they keep innovating and they keep making. Um, Humongous strikes. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Um, 
so pirate was um, mainly just focused at uh, like illegal actions, like um, like torrent sites and things like that. So no one really noticed that. And then here's Penguin 3.0 again. Um, but that's that's mainly like link building. So a lot of the SEO stuff that I've been doing lately is cleanup work from old SEO companies who have been doing uh, what Google now determines determined as a negative link negative link building work. Bad neighborhoods, or however you want to call it. So, okay, my it's gone. Yeah. How does one clean up? That is a great question. Um, that's a great question, and we're not going to cover that in this thing because um, we're going to stick mainly to like the technical stuff. But that is actually kind of a really technical question because the tools that do that, are, um, based on like, semantics and uh, user input. Uh, where users have actually gone in and said, okay, this website doesn't look like it's a really good site according to Google standards. So people put a lot of manual input into the tools that do that. And so normally you get a tool that does that, um, that assists with that, I guess, is the right word to use. Um, and, and there's quite a few out there right now. Um, while there's that boost ability, we had like 50% um, rate of, of um, Recovery, and then the things I implemented uh, as I left, we got they got up to about 86 with those things. So that was really cool. I felt really good about that. So um, they have some old, they have some of their own secret sauce too. So, uh, but the two goals of technical SEO: it's simple, it's very simple. One, getting pages indexed, and two, not getting pages indexed. So the security concerns. Um, there's reasons why you wouldn't want want pages to get indexed. <coughs> So Google bought, came and crawled my site. Is my website indexed? Uh, why aren't all my pages indexed? So you said you had webmaster tools. Have you guys submitted an XML sitemap before? Okay. Have you noticed that maybe your XML sitemap has fewer pages that are indexed in it? And maybe that, so it might say that 248 pages out of the XML sitemap are indexed, but they actually have 300 overall indexed? What's up with that? Right? We'll go over that in a bit. But a page crawl does not equal a page index. Just because Google came to your website, crawled a page doesn't mean it liked it. Doesn't mean that it felt like it was worthy to be kept and saved. So, because um, they have a finite amount of resources at any point in time. Um, whether that's you know uh, their CPU usage on their servers or storage for, uh, for their uh, uh, storage uh, for their cache pages, um, and so they have to manually, uh, not manually, sorry, they have to keep track of that finite amount of resources they have. Um, <clears throat> then there's pages that you're like, whoa, that was a totally orphaned page. It was behind, I thought that was behind a, a secure login. How did they index that page? Um, I found one for, this, for here, actually. Um, I thought that was interesting. A couple of orphaned pages for here that were indexed. Um, so here's what I'm talking about here. So this is uh, this is Google Webmaster Tools. I've got a total of 236 pages actually indexed. Nothing's blocked by our robots.txt, which is good for me because I'm I'm actually not trying to block anything. Uh, now, if your intention was to block something, you might want to see. If you had zero, you zero, you might be like, what? I wanted my whole JavaScript folder or my images folder or something blocked. Um, so you might want to check that. Zero can be good, zero can be bad. Um, and then here's my site maps. So I submitted 200, sorry, 336 pages, but only, they only like 296 of those pages. So there's like 40 pages missing. Why didn't they like those 40 pages? Well, because this is a blog site, it's most likely because it's like a tag page or some sort of redundant content that Google just doesn't want to have multiple copies of that content. What's the point of that? So Google has picked the page, and there's ways it can help Google control that, but what page to pick, and then uh, just discard the rest because I didn't need it. Um, so if you also notice, um, I submitted 336. <coughs> um, Google liked 236 overall um, that are indexed, which is really interesting, because here they also say that there's 296 indexed which is more than this one. 
Hmm. Isn't that a little baffling? There's a difference between index and crawl. Um, yeah, there's a difference between index and crawl. Definitely. So, I don't, I don't, I, do I have it here? I don't know, let's pull yeah, it up. And then the site map is, which one is the site map? The site map is so, it's just an XML site map. Okay, so you submit a site map. So, you submitted 336. And the index 296 of those, but then they crawl separately. Right? Do a bot crawl separately from the index? Right. The site map? Right. Yep, they'll crawl all the time. And um, I think right now on this blog, they, they average about 70 pages a day. They like to, they like to hit. Um, and that's all in your stats. That'll be down here in your crawl, crawl stats there. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting conundrum, right? Then you wonder. What is it like if I just go out here and just do a site query? Go. Right, so this is my blog. You get an extra H. Did I? Barth. Barth. I'm having a difficult time with this keyword today. All right. So it's two hundred thirty-four pages. That's about right. Right. Google is so funny. Um, I wish they just get their get their uh, now they're going hundred results. It's interesting. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So what I did is I just I just did the pagination here. I just clicked on a different page, the last page, ten, and um, it's omitted some results because of extra content that is duplicate. The Google's like, hey, you have a lot of these extra pages. I index these anyway just because I'm beefy and I can, <laughs> you know, and so. Just in case someone might want them someday, and so now I have. Now I've got back to 234. So it, it thinks literally, it literally thinks there's over 110 pages <clears throat> that is only on about 110 pages I have that are unique. And so, <coughs> what is up with that? That's very interesting, right? Well, it has the way it has, it has the way that WordPress is made, just default, and the way that Google works. And so, and we'll go over that too in a little bit, as far as what Google deems uh, what's important. Okay, so these are minimum requirements for indexing a page, okay? There has to be demand for the content, right? If there is no demand for the content, there's no reason for Google to index it and to keep it. So, um, they have trending things like, uh, let's see here, let's talk about, so if a rock star dies, okay? All of a sudden, someone might publish that, and then it starts trending in search, right? And then, um, so Google wants well, more and more content of this topic. And so, um, and because it's someone who has a nice brand, more and more content is generated. So that's a great thing. Um, and so demand and supply go up. And so that's, that's awesome when those two things meet. But when demand and supply aren't there, when the supply's not there, Google's like reaching for stuff, right? And then you have to keep refining your results. And so, so Google works very hard to make sure it's on the edge of every single trend it can find. And um, you have all these wonderful algorithms that, that are all about trending and demand and um, what it's anticipating will be based on you know, historical Data and it, it's just quite amazing. That that's one reason why the Chrome browser is so fast. I don't know if you're able to use Chrome. I love Chrome because they have they have it is are awesome predictive stuff. I mean, the WebKit itself is an awesome you know, browser. If you guys are using, you probably use WebKit, right? I've used a lot of different things. There's some yeah. things I'm really frustrated with Chrome for, but they're not things that apply to most people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I WebKit was awesome, um, and then. Chrome got kind of hold of it. Google got a hold of the of Chrome, and I just really enjoy it. Um, so the URL, so that's the URL to that content, okay? So if your content is hidden inside of like JavaScript or Flash, Google can read those a little better now, but it still can be hidden, and I'll show you some of that stuff too. I'll have a, I've got a case study that will go over. Um, but that's the URL to that content. Without a URL, Google can't send you send the user anywhere. So um, so it has to be a URL. There has to be um, demand for the content. And then Google has to know that it exists. 
It does this with links, browsers like Chrome, IE, toolbars. If you're aware, of, if you're familiar with Alexa, uh, Amazon bought Alexa. That was a whole play back in the day. That was fun. Um, I use it, of course, with, with Bean. Um, so they do it from their domain registrar. I don't know if you're aware of that. Their domain registrar. They're big in the DNS. They um, uh, because their domain registrar, they have access access to some of the grid's information, not all of it, but some, and um, they do a few other things like Google Analytics, uh, Google.gl, which is a, the, the tiny URL thing of theirs, Blogger, Webmaster Tools, uh, you name it. They've got dozens of products that are, are all about tracking data on the internet. Uh, Google Plus, um, Curve. Uh, Oh, pings and submissions. I haven't done that for years, but yeah, you can submit your URL to to them still. So uh, these are like the three basic minimums for getting a page indexed. <clears throat> and um, so there becomes there comes becomes some issues where um, if you want content not indexed, well, how do you make sure that Google doesn't become aware of it? Well, I don't think that's really super possible anymore. I really don't, especially with the browsers. Um, so, <clears throat> here's some issues. First, let's talk about issues of getting your pages indexed. We've got orphan pages. Anybody else? I've got about five on here. I'm hoping somebody else has one I don't have. AJ? So, so, we're looking for issues that aren't allowing pages to be indexed. Oh, you mentioned JavaScript and Flash. Yeah, those are on here. I got past the protected things. Add HTTP status If you don't return a 200 OK, you might not. Good points. You know what? I totally forgot about it. I was thinking mind types all of a sudden. And then you start, yeah, wow. Those are important. I've had clients that throw back four or fours and the page loads just fine. Yeah. You know? And that's like, what the heck? That is a great way to get your site not indexed. You know? Um, oh, yeah. Or uh, a 202 on every page or something. Not, uh, sorry, 302. Every single link has a three or two on it. Um, Google will only follow three to five redirects <clears throat> uh, before it, like, it thinks you're trying to do something funny. Like it'll flag it and then throw it into a different algorithm for like the malicious stuff that they do. Who here has gone to Google and actually had a malicious, like, uh, like you've gone done a search and it'll say, click on a result. Even before the result, it'll say, um, warning, this page has malicious content on it. You guys notice that? I've noticed that. Now that's awesome. Google can actually call the site and actually look at malware and actually warn you. And the Chrome browser is really good at that too. I think that's the awesome. The best is when it doesn't actually have any malware on it and somehow they find it anyway. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so I've had clients taken out of the, of the default search because of that, right? So Google doesn't want to send people there to get infected. So Google will take them out of the search. And then I've also had a client who, um, she was a hairdresser. And she um, she dressed she does hair in L.A. Not sorry, not L.A. but Las Vegas. And one of her uh, clients is a playmate. So because of that word on the site, she gets flagged as being adult content. So now now all of a sudden she's not in the default search on Google. You have to actually take Safe Search off to get to her. So that's not those aren't really huge engineering issues, but it's just interesting how. These algorithms um, have evolved, and if you don't know like all these little nuances, you can actually not be in the running for certain things just because you don't know. So, um, who here does Java? You do JavaScript, obviously. Okay. And Flash. I don't really know what's going to happen with Flash now with HTML5. You know, you think that HTML5 would kind of kill Flash. I'm interested to see what happens. What do you guys think? I think it's on its way out. Think so too. I don't know. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, good. I'm glad you guys feel the same way. That's you public engineers here, right? <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit about JavaScript. I've got a, my, my case study here that I have. They have a lot of JavaScript. In fact, they were pulling in, um, they were pulling, um, uh, well, I'll get to, we'll get to that. It's really fun. But B, go ahead. I was just going to say maybe one of the issues would be uh, SPAs, single page applications. Single page applications. Okay. Yeah, 
So you're talking about like an actual, not like content, like textual content per se, but actually maybe like a game? Um, or, uh, so a lot of the frameworks now, like Angular, for example, utilize what's called a single page application. So okay. it loads, it just loads it in one page. So it's so real time web applications are, you know, heading that direction. So basically you're doing pagination? All, all of the content is generated on the client side. All the templates and everything are rendered on the client mm -hmm. side. Okay. If you go to a different URL, it doesn't actually load it from the server again. It's all JavaScript based. Right, right. Um, yeah, we'll Chrome get, do, or we'll Google get, does have some things term, you can so yeah. do to make that work. Um, but it's kind of weird. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that term. So yeah, that's exactly the kind of stuff we're going to be talking about, where you might have like several pages and you're clicking through it, but the URLs aren't changing, right? Uh, sometimes the URLs do change, but it still doesn't send a request back to the server. With HTML5, that's possible. Well, you know, as long as, it, so so one of the ways around this, and we'll, we'll talk about solutions here, is actually have everything load on the client side on the, on the first initial page load. Page load. <clears throat> In fact, that's how you want to get around that. Um, so that you want to give Google everything you can up front on that kind of thing. Because Google has, has a hard time clicking on uh, like a JavaScript JavaScript link uh, as an actual user would. Okay. Yeah, it's with a single page app, that's not really an option. But okay, so yeah, I'm not familiar too much with that. Ba basically, a single page application, like you don't know what the con like it's a full blown application. Okay. Think of it as full blown application where you start out by loading your you, you load your logic, you load your templates, and then generally speaking, like if you're going to list a list of books. You request, send a request to the server and you say, give me all the books, and then you render it with JavaScript. And then they click on one and you say, okay, give me the information for this book, and you change this other page. You can even change the URL, but it didn't actually necessarily send the data back to the server, and the data is not rendered on the server side, that it even can be sent in that format to the client side. So generally with a normal single page application, you can't even provide it with uh, uh, to a search engine, because unless you execute all of the the JavaScript, it will never actually be rendered. There are some ways around that um, so where you kind of do a hybrid approach, but with a traditional single page application, none of the data is actually rendered by the server at all. Okay, so I'm not really concerned about the server per se, so long as, um, you know, for example, if I were to pull out not executing JavaScript and all the HTML there with all the text is there, it wouldn't be. It would be none of it would be. Okay, then that's a problem. Right. Okay, that's that, a problem. That, that's the traditional single page app that okay. things like Angular uses. Yeah, then, then no HTML say, is generated, okay. essentially. All right, then I'm gonna say that that'd be a problem for Google mostly. Google's done a lot better with it, but um, in most cases I would say I would do do the best to render as much of that content on the initial page load. Um, and then the last one we've got here is uh, which I, I'm so crazy I didn't I didn't add uh, I didn't add um, the codes. Yeah, the, the HTTP headers. That's so crazy. That's one of my favorite things to do, actually. Um, restrictions. Yeah, so you're all robot, robots TXT and your meta robots. Um, those are restrict issues. Those can be issues. I, you had a client. So when we were at Orange Story together, you had a client that, um, oh, shoot, she was on Oprah. Oh, yeah. She was on Oprah, and she came and she hired a coin soda. To do the SEO for, and the entire site was restricted. So no matter what we did, we couldn't do any. The only the only page they had indexed was the home page. That's because Google was grabbing that data from other sources besides their website. So the meta robots was on every single page saying "Don't index, don't follow." Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so probably a dev side that forgot that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you battled with them for like. Like months, I don't even know if it ever got fixed. It was that was just so silly, but that is an engineering issue, right? Um, that maybe you can call it engineering. I, I can fix that kind of stuff, but um, but yeah, it, it's you know when you have a when you're doing your test site, you take that stuff off after you're done. You know if you have a live test site. Um, so here's some solutions. We talked orphan page. You just identify what pages are orphaned, and then you link to them, and they're no, no longer orphaned anymore. Um, <clears throat> And you can't find orphan pages through crawling. If you crawl a site, the whole point is that Google can't find them because there's no links to them. So you actually have to manually find them somehow. Uh, in fact, in order for, for me to find the speaker, like uh, what the speaker is expected to do here at this conference, um, it was in, uh, I did a Google search for it. But I couldn't find a link 
the page on the website anywhere. But somehow, Google still found it. And so, I thought that was interesting. So I thought I meant to mention it to Victor. I don't know if he wants to be indexed or not, but it's there. Um, so you can, um, if it's password protected, and you don't want it to be behind that password protection, remove the content out of there, or you can just remove the password protection, which is probably not the best option, because you probably protected it in the first place for a reason. And so, you know, um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's a case-by-case it's case scenario. You can change links and add URLs for JavaScript. <clears throat> so, um, we, you guys are still using Ajax as a fun term, still? Okay. Sure. So when you're doing any synchronous queries, uh, we talked about, talk about it already. Um, make sure all that HTML is loaded on the page load. And then um, if you're going to do any request to the server, um, I, you know, I, I really, from an engineering point, I, my, my job isn't to tell you guys how to do your job, but rather just to show you um, how how you can optimize experience for search engines. So search engines want to see everything that the user gets to see. So anything that's hidden needs to be loaded when the page loads. I guess I've said it five times now, but I can't stress that more than enough. Um, <clears throat> um, and, the, and we'll talk about the links to the use in JavaScript. There's about four different types of ways you can, at least that I, I've got examples for how links can be made. There's really bad ways, and then there's optimal ways where Google can actually read those. Um, and the, I'm actually going to pull it from a, another presentation um, from my channel, and I think he was from um, somewhere in, in Europe. But he calls it hijacks, which is an interesting term. So um, <clears throat> anyway, for Flash, it's the same solution, really. Um, basically, make a Flash file for every page, I guess, is what you could do on that. Um, so when you had, don't have enough content, that was another issue. If you didn't have enough content, so if Google doesn't like that page because it has like two lines on it, so you might want to go, oh, I need to add content to this page, which is not enough, or combine it with a different page. I mean, does this even have a reason to exist with two lines of text on it? What's the point of this? Um, I had a client that had a huge database of all these ancestry files. And so he had made a page for every surname that he had in the database. So basically the page was just like a surname and then another line of text of like maybe like origin of a surname and maybe some other common like uh, uh, you know, synonym type of surnames that uh, came along with it. <clears throat> and um, he, uh, um, I, I threw an XML sitemap on it because they weren't being indexed. And um, I got another two million pages indexed um, out of eight, out of eight million. But um, you know, there's only so much Google is going to like. I remember him calling around to drop. And so, yeah. on that note, that's you can create that's demand for the content because there might not be enough demand for something. But that's more of a marketing job. Um, like if you have a new product that no one knows about, and you create demand. So. Um, so there's two questions, really. Do you want, do you want this page or any single piece of content to be indexed or not? Um, so if yes, you want to link to that page, you want to create external sitemaps, um, you want to make sure that, that that page has unique content and that the U URL is unique as well. Um, because if you've got a page that's like this long, You've got anchors in it, like on like on page anchors. They go up and down. You know, go back to top. Um, you know, using the pound, using the pound um, or hashtag. Uh, Google's doing a lot better at that. And that goes up and down. That's great. You know, we use like little breadcrumbs in the result. But people love to use um, JavaScript for that too, right? And so in the past, Google's been like they'll cut anything after that pound sign off. So that's been a huge issue with, with JavaScript because there's no way Google would. Problems, you know that they have unique content, um, and they're on different URLs sometimes because it's not an on-page anchor, right? And so that has been a huge issue in the past. But they've been doing a lot better with it, but I highly recommend not using the hashtag if you can or the pound sign in your URLs still, just because there, there just going to always be confusion if your code isn't like if your code isn't like uh, what do you call it semantic or 
there's not any errors, even if it's perfect, then yeah, maybe it's okay. But you want to take away as many barriers as you possibly can for, for a robot um, to be able to look at your site. Let's go ahead, you had a question back there? Or a comment? Yeah, I was just, I'm just kind of stuck on the Angular thing now. Um, because part of the URL in Angular is a hashtag, like the very, the, the base URL. And so that's kind of a, now I'm starting to like, get pretty like excited about looking into this, I guess. I could Good. Say. Good. I'm glad you <laughs> are. I, I'm, I'm very hands on. It's, it's, cause here's, here's, the, here's the problem I see that like Google created Angular, right? And so that's where some of the, I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out from your perspective, what direction, you know, uh, cause really like, Angular is being pushed as the next real-time web, right? So, does that does that make sense? Like, there's kind of a paradox that I'm running into, and I just can't get around it right this second. <laughs> well, Google has a lot of different um, silos inside of it, and uh, they only talk to each other. The, the teams only talk to each other when they have to, mm -hmm. and so um, that initiative might be a total like marketing initiative where they're trying to create some sort of niche to combat all the other companies like Amazon and, uh, and, and me, or Google, I mean, sorry, or uh, Microsoft as well. And so, uh, uh, so their initiative is probably mainly just to get the software out uh, and get people, you know, using it. And then they'll worry about those other things later, if that makes sense. But, I, you know, I don't know enough about it to say anything, really, um, from their perspective. Go ahead. I was just going to say the Angular was not ever intended to be used for content that's supposed to be indexed. Um, although there are some ways you can use Angular so that it will be indexed uh, if you structure your pages right. But as a general rule, if you want it to be indexed, it's got to be at least formatted to a certain extent on the on the server side. And then you can take and dynamicize it on the client side. But if you want it to be indexed, it has to be rendered on the server. What is Angular? Angular is a JavaScript framework for creating single page applications. Okay, that's what um, we talked about earlier. Yeah, we, we, we could show you some examples of it. It's, but uh, the, Yeah, I don't want to derail yeah. your whole thing. But, yeah, fine. Outside but I was just curious if you had known anything, and now I'm... a big issue. But that, that's actually an issue that I deal with with Hamstudy, yeah. because a lot of my stuff with Hamstudy is single page. And basically the way I do it is I have two types of pages. I have like the practice test page, which doesn't need to be indexed, mm -hmm. and so it's a single page app. And then I have my browse questions pages, which I want to be indexed so people can search for the questions in the ham radio pool. Right. And that's actually generated server side. And then, well, right now it's actually, uh, it's not Angular, it's a different one. But it's, uh, but still, like, it, it puts it out, it, it puts the content there, and then it adds JavaScript around it to make the parts that need to be dynamic, dynamic. But it's actually uh, rendered, the, the content is rendered on the server, and because of that, that's able to be, uh, index and when I was doing that, I did some research and things where you have the hashtag that causes it to go to different places. Mm -hmm. um, there is actually a format that you can you can use with that that Google will index. But basically, the upshot is when you, like you have to have it so that if it goes to those pages, it will end up rendering the content on the server. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like even if you have it so it can change the content client side in single page style, uh, if you want it to be indexed, the content has to be rendered on the server. Just, just, that's the golden rule of thumb for that. Mm -hmm. Because other, because Google doesn't execute the JavaScript. Interesting. Um, so here's an example of using hashtags. This is, these are just simple on-page anchors. And so if your JavaScript is, is actually, Google can read it, it'll do this similar things with your JavaScript page. Well, you've got the browser up there. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I need, I need to add it. Okay. So, so you can see right here. So I've already clicked on this, so they're already purplish. So these are all different locations inside of this single page. And they're using the on-page anchors. And so your your JavaScript applications will can have this happen too now. Because they're all using the hashtags uh, for the pound signs. Um, and there's all sorts of really cool neat little things here, but uh, I just wanted to show you that so that you know, when it's done in a way that Google actually likes, you can actually get things like this in here and you know Google's indexing when they like them. And um, uh, you can see here it says I've visited this page many times, right? I'm logged in. It knows I like this. 
Um, I've downloaded this program many times. It's just a crawler. It's just a broken link file crawler. I've used it for years. Uh, it's free. I really enjoy it. Uh, so where else? Where are we at? Um, and be sure the page has unique content. And so I, like I was showing you earlier with my blog, because it has so many, there, there's possibly only 110 unique pages out of over 300. So, uh, so I have over 200 pages that Google doesn't really like on my blog. Can you figure out what the, why they don't like um, it? Well, you can go through and see what pages have actually indexed. And what I'll notice, because I've done it before, is that only really the posts Google really likes. So it don't index the posts, and then maybe the category pages, the main category pages that give like, little blurbs of each post. And so the other things like the tags and um, maybe the author, maybe the author page, other things that are in WordPress, it probably won't like those. And so it's like, oh, there might not be enough content. I had a plugin once too that made a URL for an image. I had so you can make a comment just on an image. And so uh, I had to pull that off because it was being junky. Because I was adding a lot of pages with that content. So on that topic of not being liked by Google and also the unique content. So this is kind of real world. This is from my battery site. Um, we sell a lot of batteries that fit in 10 different cameras. Okay. That page is almost identical for 10 different URLs. There's a different H1 at the top that says this is camera model 100S or 200S or 300S. The rest of the content is mostly the same. Okay. So is that how they people like that? So Google has um, very specific things it likes and they have rules that they want to see happen. And, they, and for things like that, they even have um, pagination you can do uh, in, in like metadata. You can look that up. There's a whole video on it. Um, but because of the way you got set up, um, like so in the metadata, you can say, hey, we'll go to schema.org too. Schema.org, we don't have time. Shoot, schema.org has all that stuff on it. Um, but the best way to do that one is actually to have all of those, all that content on one page, and just have a selector saying, because um, it's hard to write unique content for each one of those, right? Because the only thing unique about each one is like the ID number, and it might be like a different size, right? And so if I'm gonna buy like Energizer AA, AAA uh, batteries or something, I, I might, well I, I would definitely, I would definitely put those all on one page and then how it is a different, it's like going to a clothing store where you have different colors. You don't want to go to a different page for every color. Even as a user, that's annoying. You know? Right, but at the same time, we want to be, I mean, we want to have a, a unique URL for your camera, like if you have the Canon 100S model camera, and somebody else has the 200S, we sell the exact same battery, but if you're searching 100S, I want that to get found, and the 200S won't want that to be found. You would mention both the 100 and 200 on that same page. All right, so you drop it on the page somewhere, it's buried yeah. in the, kind of the, uh, the compatibility section or like some detail section, and does that lose the weight of having a unique URL and an H1 tag? So this is where you, this is a, this is a marketing keyword kind of question. The, the whole concept is, is, is the content that you're optimizing, a, is the user's need great enough to where you can actually um, justify it? And is there enough content based around that? So in this instance, it doesn't sound like there's enough content. And so um, there's also nothing stopping you from adding more content, too. And I mean, aside from resources, right? You know, and, and I would, I, and I, I, it really just depends, depends on the product, right? I mean, if you go to um, Thinky, they have tons of user-generated content for or you know, people uploading their images of, oh, I'm wearing some cool socks about the thing, or here is me playing with this office toy thing, right? Um, it might be a little more difficult to do that with batteries, is because the community is totally different. Um, so user-generated content might not be the way to go, but adding content is always an option, but adding quality content that's gonna convert and actually into a sale, that's another question. And so, um, those are all really difficult questions which you only take uniquely at a time, and, Based on what you said, I would I would, I would pull them all on the one page. So yeah, that goes back to the original question of the unique content. It's like, how can I determine with some degree of confidence that's that potentially why some pages aren't being indexed? They look a lot like other pages. Right. 
Is there any way that you can determine why they're not in the index itself? That was, um, yes, yes you can. Um, but you have a large drop in index pages. Um, and it was close to like a release of Penguin, or not Penguin, but uh, Panda. Panda was an update that did that. It was a huge update that did that. Um, yeah, I would do that. There's actually a tool out there, I don't have the name right here, but it'll actually tell you exactly when all the updates come out. And you can upload your Google Analytics into it, and it'll compare the dates of traffic to when the, all the other. Uh, Oh, what, all the tool what tool is that? You know, I don't remember it. Uh, you can search it. It's um, uh, top of my head. It's uh, you know what? I, I can't remember uh, honestly. So I just got this gig on Monday, and um, so I, uh, I I'm not as prepared as I'd like to be, especially with questions like that. Um, uh, you know, it's somewhere. Anyway, let's move on. Um, I would Google something like um, Google Updates, Compare Google Analytics, something like that. Okay, so these are things where you don't want to have the um, page indexed. Um, use the solutions to it. Whereas, you know, you just don't publish it. And if you don't want to be up there, you can remove the content. Um, <clears throat> with the best solution, if you want to keep the content up and live, is to put it behind a password protected area if you don't want it indexed, okay? Um, just leaving it orphaned isn't going to work. As I explained today already, I, I found an orphan URL on Google searching just to accidentally found it. Go ahead. Let's see the the next session starts in. You guys can go ahead and minute and a half, okay. Yeah, I have a workshop here afterwards for this. So um, I have some resources on here. Um, these are uh, all conventions that all the search, all the search engines are agreed on. Um, these three, these, uh, I guess the schema that are sitemaps from us takes to your information that they offer you. Okay, these are all things that they do. Domearchive.net, that's a whole movement of um, don't let search engines index your stuff. Which is interesting, very interesting movement. And then um, the bottom two are you just webmaster tools for being in Google. Uh, but if you guys like to stay, I've got a case study. Uh, we can go over some JavaScript stuff.